shredded, ripped, defined, single digit body fat. Yes. You want to get there? Let's talk about it. Ooh, difficult. And is it worth it? That's a follow up question. Yeah. First off, we got to say that, okay, so single digit body fat, obviously, body fat percentages uh, that can be represented by one digit, like 3%, 5%, 6%, 9%. That's uh, ripped for men. For women, add ten percent. Yeah, don't. Yeah, exactly. You go, you go up about 10% uh, ab- about ten percent or so, five to ten percent. Uh, not not something a woman should uh, should chase for sure, because then you're talking about some serious health issues. So, I think that's a, a good a generic way to uh, since we're speak if we're if we're speaking to single digits, we're we're speaking to men, what we're talking about. But if you just add 10% of that number, the same thought process applies. Like when we say things like that's really, really crazy, almost unhealthy lean, that's like 3% for men, 13% yeah. would be women. Right. So that would be the way I would look yeah. at that. I would say, se- I would say it's more like 7%, but it's, it's definitely more, right? Cause you figure 10% for a man is not equivalent to 20% in a woman. I'd say five, more like five, 5% of a man, 5% is like 15% on a woman. You think so? Say, yeah. I think 10, 10% it's, it's like within that range. Four and a half. It's, it's with stupid. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. <laughs> It's within that range. You have zero opinions here. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think I've been single let's, digit let's, once let's, by accident. Yeah. So that's my contribution to this topic. You got that flu really bad that one time? Yeah. It no, it's, it's so it, it, it is important also to understand that single digit body fat is beyond what is considered healthy. Okay. So there is a range of what would be considered healthy body fat. It's a pretty wide range. Outside of that, you start to sacrifice health, uh, either for aesthetics or, in the other case, you if it goes on the higher end, you're sacrificing it for you know a lifestyle that maybe isn't so healthy. So, in other words, once you go past a certain point in terms of body fat percentage, it, you, you know, let's say in the high range, you start to get negative effects associated with body fat. If you start to pass a certain point in the low range, you start to get negative effects associated with too low of body fat. So. For a man to get into single digit body fat percentages, especially when you start to get to the middle range, you know, the five, six percent or lower, you are almost always sacrificing health in pursuit of a particular look. Um, and again, you know, add X amount percentage for women, between seven to ten percent, I would say. Um, also, you're sacrificing health. Women uh, suffer more from getting too lean, typically, than men. Women's bodies are more sensitive. To too low a body fat uh, because it's just their hormone profile and also because their bodies um, are always constantly measuring body fat and in, in, you know trying to say trying to figure out whether or not it should be fertile. So you'll typically see them lose their period first and other things start to happen. But it's important to say that because getting single digit body fat percentage is essentially for aesthetics. Mm-hmm. It's not for athletic performance. It's not for health. It's just, hey, I want to look uh, a particular way. Yeah. yeah, I would add a category there that that maybe I didn't see until after the fact is the uh, the what you learn on the way to that is is pretty interesting. So from a trainer's perspective, I I got a lot more value uh, from it than I, that wasn't my goal. By the way, I didn't go into it like, hey, I'm going to learn a lot here, and this is going to be making right. me a better trainer. I was purely driving that way towards uh, the the competition thing, right? Like what I ended up getting from it w- that was really fascinating. I remember this uh, because it was pre mind pump, and Justin and I were meeting a lot. <laughs> I remember just, you know, I don't know. At that point, I'm over ten years in the career of being a personal trainer, and so uh, I got really excited. And I remember meeting with him on a weekly basis, and being like, "Man, it's crazy! I'm learning this and I'm learning that." Yeah. Like mm-hmm. to be that far into my career and feel. Uh, that I was still learning a lot about these things that I thought I kind of already knew a lot about, but then to see it kind of manifest in, in the way I looked in my training regimen and diet and all that stuff, I thought that part of it, I thought was really valuable. And so that, and I think it's made me a better communicator to even mm-hmm. the average person. So I don't think that you would think that as a trainer, like how does me getting three or 4% body fat help me com- communicate to Susan who doesn't care about that and just wants to lose 40 pounds of fat. It actually did. It actually yeah. made me an incredibly communicator to that client for that. That doesn't seem like that would yeah. match. I remember those conversations. It's funny because you start get geeking out on like how much like a certain amount of carbs would affect, uh, you know, the retention, the look and, you know, sodium or just like all these little, little movers because you're so lean that like anything you added into your diet, like affected energy, it affected you in some way or the other. And it's like, if you can, 
identify that and you can uh, have like a client that's actually like, well, I'm pretty sure this is just water retention or you can yes. like nail it down to what it yeah. really is. That I was, think it's also important to understand that uh, it's, it's rare. Uh, now, social media would have you uh, believe otherwise, but single digit body fat percent, except for the rare genetic anomaly is work, it's consistency, and it's, among all things, rare. Uh, even working in gyms. Like I mean, we, you're more likely to run into a millionaire. Millionaires are more, there's more millionaires than there are people with six packs, uh, six pack abs. That's a, that's a statistic that people often uh, will point to. And you can back it up with some data, but I'll speak from personal experience. I mean, I worked in, man, I worked in gyms and managed gyms my entire professional career from the age of 18 and for 20 years, I was in gyms working in them. So I worked, and there's a there's a self-selection bias in gyms. People who go to gyms already work out and are caring about their health. So it's not even representative of the general population. It's representative of the gym population. And it was rare to see people in gyms that were single-digit body fat. It, it's rare to see people in single-digit body fat in bodybuilder and in hardcore gyms even. You go to a hardcore bodybuilder gym, and there's 50 people working out, Probably three at most, usually one is walking around single digit body fat. So it is not an easy thing to achieve. No. And the reason why I want to communicate this, and it's rare, I want to communicate this because social media, all you see on social yeah. media are single digit body fat percentages. It's everywhere. And so it makes you believe that it's far more common than it is. Thus, what is wrong with me? I can't accomplish this. This is so hard. It's not common whatsoever. You rarely ever see this. Even uh, you, you know, yeah. you you talk about that, and that I remember uh, being a trainer inside a gym uh, where they got two thousand workouts a day, and if a bodybuilder or somebody who looks like what you're describing, someone shredded, walked in the gym, everybody knew about it. You yeah. all, oh, did you see that dude? Did you yeah. see that one guy who just came in? Like, yeah, who's that? You, you, you know, like you, people. You everybody was talking about. Yeah. It. All the trainers would talk about it when you see somebody that is that crazy shredded and you're right like since social media we that's what ev everybody and anybody who's ever even been that lean before that's what they represent on their instagram page right that's what yeah. they're but they're promoting or pushing and they're not or, like that all the time yeah and they're not even like that all the time it's a very small period of time where they got that shredded then they have all these photos that they recycle and use all year round so then the average person who follows these people for inspiration think that this person is just looks like this all the time. And then you're right. They follow every person that does that. And you go, God, why can't I, why yes. can't I look like this or be like I this? I also, and this brings us to the first point, which is if you want to get to single digit body fat percentage, you have to have the single digit body fat percentage mindset, the proper mindset. So I'm going to start with this. Hey, real quick. This episode is brought to you by Intera skincare, peptide based skincare products. You won't find this anywhere else, click on this link and check them out. You have to understand this because if you don't, this is a path to destruction. You have to understand that getting to single digit body fat is not going to, is not a panacea of happiness. It's not instant popularity. It's not this like, oh my God, I did it and everything's amazing. Yeah. It's actually none of those things. Most people don't care. You might get a few looks at the gym or if you're at the beach, otherwise you, most people can't even tell the difference. And it isn't this great, amazing thing. So get that, first understand that, because if you get this, if you have this understanding or this belief that, man, when I get shredded, mm -hmm. I'm going to get so much attention from the opposite sex, or when I get shredded, life is going to be incredible and things are going to change. And maybe you're not consciously thinking about that, but really think about that. Do, what do I think is going to happen when I get there? You will be sorely, sorely disappointed. And it, it is a path to destruction because it's this constant rabbit that you're chasing that you'll never catch. So start there first. Realize that getting a single digit body fat percentage isn't going to make you any happier. It will almost always be more miserable because it's so challenging. Understand that first. Then you can move to the rest of the mindset. Well, I was going to say, I was going to add to that mindset. Like another thing that you have to have a relentless amount of self-discipline and consistency to reach there. Insane. Yeah. Just Insane discipline. The, because... You it, don't, you can't, you're not off a meal. <laughs> yeah. You, you, and you, and you got to live it every single day to even move the needle, right? Let's say you're somebody who's already pretty fit, 13, 12, 13% body fat for a male. That's pretty damn fit. You're good. Or, yeah. You're, you're in really good shape. Right. And you want to say 6%, like 
that the distance between 12% and 6% is a long way of consistency. It is not, oh, a couple hard weeks of dieting no. and training. It's like months and months of not missing these meals. And it gets harder as you get closer. Like, like most things or like the opposite of most things where things get easier as you do more mm. of it. The, the deeper you go into the, the single digits, meaning the leaner and leaner you get, the more difficult and the less room for error there is. And so the level uh, and mindset of, of commitment and consistency, and, and during that process, you're going to have some of the things that Justin alluded to, which is these peaks and valleys of feeling like you're doing the right thing or not, and like seeing your physique go kind of backwards. And like, you have to be able to persevere through that and stay consistent to get there to, in order to reach those numbers. I've gone, I've gone to single digit body fat, high single digit body fat many, many times. I've gotten to mid single digit body fat only twice in my life. And it is a mental game. It is such a mental game. First off, if you're walking around at a healthy body fat percentage as a man, 12%, which is good, athletic, your athletic body fat percentage, and you, you're you holding a few pounds of extra water because yesterday you had extra sodium or some carbs that were whatever, or maybe you, you didn't sleep great, or maybe you're a little sick, so you're holding a little water. You can't tell. You, you look in the mirror, you can't tell. You're at 6% body fat. You hold three three pounds of, uh, of water. Yeah. It looks like you gained three percent body fat. Yeah, and you look in the mirror and it messes with your head. Like, what happened? I, I, how did I? I my definition's gone. Like, what's going on? You go up a percent body fat, you can tell in a big way. It completely messes with your head. And the leaner you get, the more your body fights getting leaner. Right. Yeah. And the way it fights, it knows it, it's not healthy. Listen, yeah. I've never had dreams about food <laughs> until I get to blow. And I know when I'm getting down to about eight percent body fat or so, once I drop below eight. I start to dream and think about food. And I'm not talking about like pizza and hamburgers. Like I'm thinking about like an apple yeah. or a banana. And it's very, very strange what happens. You also start to just, your, 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 hot, your heat and cold tolerance start to change. Your workouts suck. You're not going to be strong. You're susceptible to getting sick. Not very insulated anymore. Yeah, you're not strong at 6% body fat. Not like you are when you're 15% body fat. Um, you don't get pumps in the gym. When you wear, you know, here's another one that messed with you. You know, you wear you wear a long sleeve shirt. You, you feel like you're just you lost your muscle because yeah. you're smaller. <laughs> it's just a total uh, mental game. And then the cravings. I said I talk about dreaming about food. Mm -hmm. Your body, in efforts uh, of of not allowing you to get leaner and trying to gain help you gain body fat, it will kick up your cravings to the point like you have to be so disciplined that you have to be comfortable living in craving land. That's what it felt like all day long. You're just craving food. Okay, now that we've totally turned everybody off of wanting to do it, let's tell them how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you still want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. If you still want to, yeah. you're still listening, you, know, you still I want, want to I do want to spend a little bit more time here. The discipline you're talking about, Adam, like if you're trying to go from, if you're a man, you're trying to go from 16% to 13% body fat. Different story. Having a weekend where you go out with your buddies or a couple days here or there, not a big deal. You start to get into the single digit, you can't have that. There is no off meal. There is no off anything. Mm -hmm. It's every meal, all the time, every day, all day. And so it's not discipline. It's obsession. Yeah. It's probably a better word you, to describe I mean, it. I, those that are watching and following along the series that I'm doing on YouTube, this has been what I, the recent stuff that I'm communicating is I've already recently ran into this point, and I'm not even in single digits yet. I'm Once I get sub 12, you know, start getting 11, to, as I get closer to single digits, this becomes necessary. Like up until this point, I've been able to guesstimate my food. I've been able to just make good choices, hit protein intake, train hard, be smart, like focus on those things. And then the body fats come down. I've been building muscle. It's been this great, relatively easy process to get there. But at this point now, like this last test I had, I didn't, the body fat percentage didn't budge and didn't move yet. I felt like I was doing a really good job, but the truth is it's just, I'm not, I wasn't tracking diligently enough to make sure there's no, cause I couldn't, I can no longer afford there's no error. to be traveling and eating out and being off a few hundred calories here or there to now reach this new level that I'm trying to get to. And so it's now required that, okay, that can't miss now. Which That's right. Next, what you mentioned is you start with tracking everything you have to track everything because in order to get to single digit body fat you have to know where you're at because then you can know where you're going i mean if you're off by a few hundred calories which is easy easy if you don't track you will be off by a few hundred calories. even someone like me who knows what's in food if i try to guesstimate i'm going to be off a little bit with one meal off a little bit with the next meal off a little bit and by, by the time you add up all the meals 
I'm off by three to 400 calories. Yeah. <laughs> so you start by tracking everything, you, it, which means you weigh things. You have yeah. to start weighing your food, uh, <clears throat> weigh your rice, count. Everything's your, cooked oh, at home yeah. at that point too, yeah. right? You're, you can't really go out. That's it. Your milk, your everything, your fluid, like track everything. Give yourself at least a week or two of completely tracking everything because you want to know generally what you're consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. Otherwise, you won't know where to go. What direction do I go? You know, wh where can I cut whatever? I, I think Justin just said it best for me is like this This is the kind of the conversation I have with myself when I get to this point is, okay, Adam, if you want the next level, um, you no longer get the luxury of making good choices out, eating out. You now have to make everything or buy from a food service yep. that's weighed and measured and macroed out, which is what I've done now too. It's like So when we, we've recently traveled... Uh, and this time I left it, I had no choice. I was like, I'm at a point now where I could go try and make good choices. And I won't, what will, what will happen in that time is I won't necessarily get fatter or put on body fat, but I won't make progress. And if I'm trying to make progress week over week, cause it's a long battle to get down to those single digits, right? Cause it takes a while. Mm -hmm. I've got to make progress every week, the incremental progress, which means that I've got to cook everything myself, control all the controllables, or invest in somebody who's doing that for me, right, and preparing those meals and have it ready for me because there's just no room for air anymore. So tracking becomes non-negotiable. Right. Now, you mentioned room. That's the next uh, stage, which is start by, and I know it's going to sound weird, but eat more and build muscle. Now, why are we eating more and building muscle? We're talking about getting to single-digit body fat. Well, here's what happens. To get yourself leaner, period, end of story, you have to take in less calories than you burn. To get to single-digit body fat, you got to give yourself a long runway. Yeah, we got to get some padding. Yeah, like if you just need to lose 10 pounds, you want to go from 16% to 13% body fat. I mean, you can cut your calories and you'll get there and you won't have to keep cutting. To get to single-digit body fat, you're going to cut several times because your body's going to adapt a, 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 when you hit a certain caloric intake. So you'll cut it first, you'll lose some weight. Cool, I'm at 10%. Plateau, what do I do now? Cut, a, cut more. You cut again. Cool, now I'm down to 8%. All right, how do I get down to six? I got to cut again. But if I don't have enough runway with my metabolism, I'm screwed. To, give you, to, to, make it more, to make it easier to understand, if I'm a man and I track everything and I'm like, I want to get to single digit and I'm at 12% body fat, okay? Mm -hmm. And I track everything, I'm like, oh, cool. I'm averaging 2,200 calories a day, and I want to get from 12 to, let's say, 6% body fat. I'm not in a good place. The, the, mm -hmm. What am I going to do? Go down to 1,500 calories? That'll get me so far, but not very far at all. I'm going to eventually plateau, and then I can't go down any lower because I can't even hit my protein intake. I'm, I'm going to end up losing muscle. By the way, this is a great way your body adapts is it starts to make you reduce muscle. So you end up losing weight and your body fat stays the same or goes up. So what ends up happening? So what do you what do you suggest like minimally if I was to raise now and reverse uh, diet and like raise my calories up to a level that I could then, you know, pursue the single digit minimum of so I have numbers for all this. I used to have a saying like for a this. A thousand at least or no, I, I want to be able to do three cuts in a in okay. a in a prep for yeah. if I'm getting ready. So first Which of is all about what, fifteen hundred calories, right? Yeah, about fifteen hundred calorie root buffer, okay. give or take. Okay. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Look, are you lifting weights, eating a ton of food and struggling? You're not packing on any muscle. You're not building any muscle at all. You're not getting stronger. Well, check it out. We have a hard gainer guide. This can be your ultimate resource to turn that around. Pack on some muscle mass with our hard gainer guide. It's totally free. You can get it by downloading it, clicking on the link in the description below. So I used to have a saying with my clients that I coached for prep, so bikini and men's and uh, bodybuilding, all the all the above that I coached, and it was shows are won in the off season, not in prep. That's right. So and and, and when I explain that to the client, it's that uh, you know you're hiring me, but you, I wouldn't let someone hire me just for the prep because I need the most important part. I need the getting you ready for prep, and that's the building the metabolism, which I think is the most important part. Because if you get a if you get somebody who thinks they're going to get ready and get down, to, and this, this the reason why I'm using com competing because getting down to single digits is the same. That's a, that's, that's a bodybuilding specialty. Yeah, it's, there it's, is it's, no other. This sport is a competitive that goal. I'm yeah, sorry. Exactly. It's, yeah, exactly. It's a competitive goal. It's the same. Bodybuilders formula. do it the best. Regard, regardless if you're going to get on stage or not, this this formula still is going going to apply, and that is we have to ramp the metabolism up enough, male or female, to where I can at least cut you 500 calories or more three times in that time because. Every couple of weeks in a calorie deficit 
because this is what I have found. It only takes a couple weeks for that body to start to adapt to that new caloric intake. And then I have to do it again and do it again to keep seeing this like mm -hmm. progress. And so I would want a minimum of 1500 calorie plus buffer room, 1500 calorie buffer room of what? Of putting you still in a, a what I would consider healthy or okay place to be. Yeah. So for my females, I didn't want to go lower than 1500 calories. My males, I didn't want to go lower 2, than 2000 calories. Yeah. And so I want to get my, my male who's ready for prep at 3,500 or more calories minimum, he needs to be eating and comfortably keeping his his weight and body fat percentage out. My females, a minimum of 25 to 2,800 calories they need to be at in before I would and By the way, them. this is, by the way, these are not men eating 4,000 calories at 20% body fat because no. you ain't getting down to 8% body no, fat. Not from 20, no. Not from 20. This is somebody who's able to eat 3,500 to 4,000 calories who's probably sitting around 12%. 12. Yeah. And then you can cut down. That's so, so that's a good point to make is that somebody listening right now is like, cool, I want to get to single digit. I'm at 18% body fat and I'm a guy. No. No, you don't have enough. Unless you're, unless you're burning 7,000 calories a day, yeah. then forget about it. That's why it's so hard because your body adapts so quickly and so strongly, that one, especially once you pass 10% or so, it starts to ramp up. That what ends up happening is what everybody experiences is they they get down to let's say eleven or ten percent and it's a struggle. They're like, cool, I want to keep pushing it, and they just lose muscle. That's just what ends up happening from this point on is they just continue to lose muscle, get weaker, and they never accomplish that. So that same thing for me, Adam. As I would say, get up to at least thirty five hundred calories where you're sitting at a decent body fat percentage already, and then you've got room. And the way to do that is to reverse diet yourself, hit your protein targets, eat your body weight in grams of protein, and lift weights and get strong. If you're not at that place, don't even try. Don't even try to get to single digit because you're just going to do yourself some damage and some harm. And you're, or you're just going to be really challenged to getting there. I, I'm going through this right now. So I only had this small window that we were documenting. And in the first month to month and a half was reverse dieting and get my calories up. Remember, I came from the GLP-1. I was eating hardly anything. And so I ramped it up to 2,000, then 2,500, then 3,000, then 3,500, about 3,800 was the, about the peak I got up to. And then I've started to reverse back the other way. Now, the problem with that was I would have liked to have had two, three more months of continuing to kind of build the metabolism to where I'm cruising at 4,000 plus calories because I know that once I start cutting 500 to 1,000 calories that I'll, I'll only lose so much percent before I plateau. I'm, I'm at that situation right now. I'm eating in the low, I'm eating like 2,400 calories right now and I'm nowhere near 3%. Normally when I'm getting ready for a show, by the time I'm down to 2,400 calories, I'm already at like 5% body yeah. fat. I'm already like I'm a couple weeks out from stage and my final cut's going to be maybe 2000 and like picking up some walking like that is the last bit. So the fact that I'm using 2400 calories as a cut right now and I'm I'm still at like 11% body fat, mm -hmm. that's not like that's not sustainable for me. I already know right. that what I'm going to have to do at the end of this whole little docu series is I'm going to turn right back around and add calories back right. and have to reverse diet because right. it's it's not a recipe for me getting down to single digits. Exactly. So next, after you've built your metabolism, you've built some muscle, you're maintaining at a at a at a, at a caloric intake that allows you some runway, now you can start cutting. Now, I don't like to cut people too drastically right out the gates. 500, 600 calories, 800 calories at the most is where I'd start. So five to 800 calories below what you've set your caloric intake at is the place to start. And then what you do is you just sit there and allow the body fat to come off your body while you continue doing what you're doing. And typically, typically you'll see the body plateau anywhere between two to four weeks, right? So you'll see some fat loss um, and it's, starts to stagnate at about, for me, it was around three, four weeks. And then I'd leave it there for a little bit before trying to cut again. I think a big mistake people make is they cut, cut, cut way too fast or way too hard right out the gates, which really sends a strong signal to the body that says, let's pair this muscle down. Let's slow down the metabolism. Allow the body to adapt slowly. Try to maintain that muscle. It's super, super important. I had a kind of a generic formula and it would be different for each client, right? So that's why I'll give you ranges that it ranged anywhere between 500 and 800 calories is what the cut would be. And I would pair that with the first. So the first week would be purely cut in calories. The second week I would start to add 2000 steps a day. And I would, I would ride that cut 
until I started to see the progress slow down and then we go into another cut. And that's kind of what that would look like. Mm-hmm. So I like to do a, a, a little bit of a calorie cut while also increasing activity, not drastic. 2000 steps a day is not crazy walking. That's nothing. And then on, on top of that, only 500, 800 calories. So I'm not extreme cutting. So I give a little bit of range for, for both to happen. That seemed to be like this perfect, yeah. nice cut. Well, next, and actually we'll get to steps because that's actually one of the, one of the important steps here. But uh, next is to, this one's what people don't, this is where people, everybody screws up. This is probably the opposite of what you think, mm-hmm. but you reduce your training volume. Yep. You've cut your calories. You're reducing your caloric intake. One of the big mistakes people make is they dramatically increase the strength training volume and intensity. Yeah. So they're in the gym, they're lifting weights. They were doing this routine at 3,500 calories. Now they're at 2,500 calories after two cuts and they're doing the same routine. Yeah. Your body can't recover like it used to because you have less energy to do so. You have less nutrients. The worst thing you could do is increase the intensity of volume. A lot of people do this. They're like, oh, I'm trying to cut now. Now what I'm going to do is you're I'm going to trying do, to burn. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm doing supersets yeah. and I'm going crazy with the intensity. And this only results in muscle loss, overtraining, illness, injury, or all of well, the above. That's it. That's I think that's where the misconception. It's like I need to burn calories, uh, and this is going to increase my chances of burning body fat. When in fact you got to preserve muscle. So it's it's strange, but it's if you focus more on actual strength training with uh, adequate rest periods, you're going to be so much better off. The best, the best strength training style or routine that I would do when my calories were getting low was low rep, three minute rest in between sets. It maintained my strength. It didn't burn me out. Didn't overtrain me. Now I had experimented with other stuff before and I did what I thought you were supposed to do was higher reps, supersets, and it would just burn me out, man. Mm-hmm. I would just overtrain. And then it dawned on me like, yeah. well, duh, I'm eating way less calories this is high volume. What if I drop it's the volume too. <laughs> and go low reps? And yeah. it was phenomenal. It did an incredible job at maintaining muscle. So you got to reduce the training volume if you change anything at all. Shows are one in the off season, not in the prep. That's when you build the physique. You do not build the physique when you're catabolic, right? Mm-hmm. So the body is either catabolic or anabolic. In other words, it's either cutting, getting, getting rid of, or it's building. Uh, when we're in a calorie surplus and we're in the off season and we're building the metabolism, we're in anabolic and we're building the muscle. That is when you pack on all the clay and you sculpt the body. When you get into the cut portion and you're trying to get down to single digits, you no longer are building muscle. You are just going to reveal the muscle that you did in the off season. You just want to keep the it. recipe for losing muscle with that body fat is to do too much. We've already talked uh, at nauseum the study that t- shares how little of volume you need to maintain what you've already built. So if you did all the work in the off season and you built this 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 mu- amount of muscle, it's like one seventh is needed in order to keep that, and that is more ideal when you're in this constant calorie deficit to reduce whether you reduce that in total sets total exercises or intensity i did a lot of times intensity because at this point i'm i like the consistency of my routine and showing up every day so i just backed way off the intensity just, just I, went in and I would just go it. in and go through the movements and and it was like it was a, like a get pump. a pump that's kind of it almost looked like these massive trigger sessions towards the you know last 4 to 6 weeks of my prep because i knew that i was in such a calorie deficit i'm burning my body's just burning body yep. fat i don't want to stress it anymore i just and i just want to send this signal that, hey, we still need muscle because I'm going to do these movements every day and these exercises. So I just would back way off the intensity but stay in my rhythm of what I was doing. But, boy, is that the, like one of the biggest advantages that I thought I had when I looked at my peers because I had the opportunity to com- work out in the gym that I saw a lot of my competition. And they j- they did the opposite. As it gets closer to the show, they're ramping up the intensity and they're getting after it. And I see them running on the treadmill. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like – Talk about a recipe for losing all that hard muscle that you or that you worked so hard to build in the off season. I know they're all in a hard cut. We're all eating similar type of foods, and then they're pushing their bodies like that. I'm like, they have no idea right now that they're actually hurting themselves by pushing more like that. Right. Next is what you mentioned, Adam, which is increase your steps. Now, I like steps over other forms of cardio for a few different reasons. One, steps, you could initially do them without having to schedule and structure actual cardio, which is great. It always makes it... More convenient if I just track them. More and just try, activity based. Just try to move throughout the day. Number two, walking is a very low stress on the body. In many cases, it's actually recuperative and facilitates recovery. Remember, we're playing this game of don't overtrain the body because I'm in a calorie deficit. I'm trying to get to single digit. What you don't want to do is intense cardio or intense anything else. You want to keep the stress 
for the strength training. So walking was great. I mean, uh, you know, when I got myself down to 4%, my form of, of what I would do with steps, I would try to just walk throughout the day. And then I'd get on a treadmill and I'd walk and it would be at a normal speed. It wasn't at this crazy speed. And I'd do it for 30, 45 minutes and it kept muscle on my body. When I tried doing other forms, rowing or step master or something like that, and it was, you know, higher intensity, I noticed I'd start to lose some strength. It was just, it would, it would tip me over into overtraining. When you push on a Stairmaster mm -hmm. or running on a treadmill, uh, you are sending the, a signal to the body that you need to be good at endurance and stamina mm -hmm. and having all this extra muscle that you just built up is not advantageous. And so it will want to pare that down. If you pair that and also being in a calorie deficit, it is a surefire way to lose muscle also. And so, but yet there is an advantage to moving more and burning more calories, but a way more efficient way of doing it when it comes to like holding on to muscle and just losing body fat is to walk. And, in, and the best way to do that is to create it habitually through the day. And the reason why I liked, I would, I would coach to steps is my goal was to, if I could get a client and some of them were not all of them, but some of them, I would be able to do the step ladder of steps. Uh, like scaling steps 2,000 every every other mm -hmm. week of going up in the, of activity without ever having scheduled cardio or scheduled go to a treadmill for an hour long to get that done. And that would always be the goal. Like, hey, can you get up and do this? And can you make sure you walk at lunchtime? And could you find all these ways to add steps into your routine? And then only if you, you can't do any more because maybe you're stuck at a station for eight hours and you can't move for whatever job you have, do we would we go to the treadmill and say okay I need to go to the treadmill in order to get those steps that would I want to do it and the why I found that was aside from the the science that supports what you're you're not pushing the body intensely and forcing the body to pare down muscle but more importantly after the person gets done with you know, getting down a single digit body fat, a lot of those like kind of movement activity things they built into their lifestyle was more sustainable. Yeah, they now create this habit of like you know Adam like. I started doing these steps first thing in the morning before I had my breakfast, and I just ended up liking that. I sort of get up in the morning, do outside. It's quiet. It's like I'm just going to keep that going. Like I love that. I love taking a client to that level and then adding all these habitual, uh, you know, moments of time of walking that then becomes something like you know what? Like I'm going to continue to I, do that. I like I like what you said, Adam, because it also it really lends it to the to the following. Like almost always, and this sucks, but it's true. What almost always or inevitably follows when somebody does successfully get to single digit is this crazy rebound. Mm -hmm. This crazy, because the amount of discipline yeah. and fighting the cravings and, oh, I've got to be so consistent every single day, yeah. day in and day out, and then boom, I hit this number, and then people tend to go off, and they go off in such a terrible direction. So what you're saying, Adam, is great because you maintain some of these activities, and I'll say this. Once you hit single digit, you're not going to want to maintain it. Uh, only crazy people do, and it's not good for you. When you come out of it, you should structure your coming out of it like you did going into it. Yeah. Don't just say, I'm off of it, now I'm going to go off. Because the cravings are so strong yeah. and so bad that when you start to feed yourself, the cravings actually kick up <laughs> for a while. And this is where I've seen people gain 15, 20 pounds crazy in 30 days. Yeah. yeah, it's absolutely crazy. These are the final hours for Black Friday sale. 60% off all bundles and all programs happening right now. Click on this link. Got some questions. The first one is, is it worth it to get to single digit body fat? For most people, no. You're not going to gain much from it. I think it's worth it for everybody to get pretty lean. I'd say for men, if you're trying to get like lean and you're like, I really want to get lean to look good. Like you, you'll get there about Ooh. nine, 10%. And that you can do without getting too crazy. Uh, I think you'll be happy. You'll have a six pack. You'll look good. You're fit. Um, you know, getting down to 5%, it's, it's so like a real 5%. When you see it, it's like an anatomy chart. Um, and, and I don't think it's worth it for most people. I'm going to take it. I'm just going to take an opposing argument to it just for shits and giggles. I'm going to say yes. And the reason why I'm, I'm going to say yes is that if you follow the steps on how we tell you, we just told you how to do it and you do it the right way, I think the value of, of that forever, like I don't, like I have no desire to stay single digits at whatsoever, but, but doing so has given me the tools to really turn the dials uh, anytime that I want and has gained me a, a much better understanding on how to do that. And so I find tremendous value 
in in the educational portion of doing it. I think that mm. once you're there, you'll find that. Well, the asterisk is if you did it right, yeah. right? If, if you didn't hurt yourself. A That's a huge asterisk. That's yeah. what I'm, why I prefaced it with that because if you just starve yourself and get down to fucking single digits, yeah. then it's going to do nobody any good. That's probably the worst thing you could do. Yeah. But if you actually do it methodically, like we laid out, like the blueprints to do it that way, and you achieve it, I think you'll find it's incredibly rewarding and valuable. Uh, well, one thing that it did for me is it made it easier to maintain 10% body fat. Like once you get down to five, 10% feels kind of flexible and easy uh, in, in comparison. So I can see some benefit there, but yeah, I don't know. Most people, <laughs> I think the pursuit of single digit is going to let, it's just going to give them a lot of, a lot of heartache and, uh, in, in not great body. That's a addition. caveat to it right there. Yeah. Is yeah. It, yeah. Saying that, like, I mean, that's, I, we all agree there. Yeah. I mean, most people are going to do it the wrong way. M most people are, it's going to discourage them. It's going to send them back spiraling out of control, binging. But if you actually did it the right way, I think there's lots yeah, of, if you're going. methodical and I, I would look at it a bit, just like trying to achieve some crazy PR and some extreme performance goal in that regard, um, you just have to look at it for what it is. This isn't like an end zone for you where you're going to be able to sustain and maintain it. It's just a pursuit where you learn yeah. and then you kind of walk yourself back to reality. I think that's a great analogy. I, cause I also don't think training for PRs in squatting and deadlifting and stuff like that is the most healthy thing ever, but the mm. skills and the things that you have sure. to apply in order to reach PR numbers and movements like that have tremendous value of the knowledge that you gain on the way there. And that I think is really valuable, but not actually training towards PRs all the time. I don't think that's healthy. So very similar. What are the best high protein foods for building? Well, for building, I mean, animal sources are your best for steak, cu for cutting. Mm -hmm. There's some pretty good high protein sources for cutting. You typically want to look at low fat uh, just because of the calories are low. You know, your classic chicken breast. Chicken thighs are actually great. They're not that, it's like not that much more fat in chicken thighs versus chicken breast. Um, flank steak, there's lean red meats. You can get really lean yeah. ground beef even. Ground, ground beef, yeah. Yeah, which just, is really, it's actually pretty just palatable. Volume wise, yeah. And easy. Uh, there's certain fish, uh, you know, types that are pretty good. You know, tilapia is the famous, you know, bodybuilding. Believe it or not, I used tilapia a lot when I got down to, 4%, but the reason why I use it so much is it was light and easy to use. Yes. If I threw salsa mm -hmm. on it, it was like I could just shovel it down, which uh, I know that sounds uh, like not great, but that's what ends up happening when you're getting that lean is you're just like, oh, here's my food, shovel it down. Um, so those are those are all pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to just keep it generic and just steak, potato, and meat. I mean, that's like, that's the those that's the recipe right there. Mm -hmm. Most all my, my carb sources are potatoes or rice. And then, uh, and then meat, you know, like it's pairing it with, and I actually think actually having a nice rotation of, of all meat is really good. So I do a lot of ground bison. I do veal, I do Turkey, I do chicken, I do ground beef. I think, I think fish, I think rotating through all of your meats with a, a simple carb, like a potato mm -hmm. or rice, I think is the best, best bet. What are some tips to reduce cravings while cutting? Well, in the context of single digit body fat, like I'll, t I'll give you a couple things that are like a little helpful, but <laughs> well, let's start with that. And then I'll tell you why uh, you just got to embrace it. So mm -hmm. I used to drink a lot of, um, uh, not what is it called? Water with the bubbles. Uh, sparkling, sparkling water. Sparkling water. Yeah. Yeah. Sparkling water, a little bit of lime. I would add salt to it. I know that sounds silly, but just sipping on sparkling water helped somewhat um but you know honestly if you're getting down a single digit body fat you have to embrace you're gonna be hungry the all the time like literally literally embrace don't run from the cravings acknowledge and embrace them and i would with my in, in mentally i'd say something i think like oh man i'm yeah i'm, I'm craving food i'm getting shredded and i, I would just think of it that way because you're gonna be Hungry all the time. I mean, I've heard some people say gum just so they have some yeah. busy. Yeah, gum's do, one. Right? Gum and water. Okay. That was like my gum. I had packs and packs of gum, and I was always carrying a gallon of water with my. And so <laughs> keeping my mouth busy. I like, and it was the gum was for flavor, and I actually get some of that. The water was to keep me peeing and drinking and not eating. Those two things, because you're right. Like, 
you know, I do, and I do like. You get used to the feeling of hunger. And you do, you yeah. do, mm -hmm. I, and I do think that that's another thing that's valuable to this is you know our definition of hunger is is really skewed. You like, can survive. Most of what we feel is cravings. Yeah, yeah. And it isn't real hunger. Like you know, a lot of times you're you're, di you're eating way more than the average person, and yet you're you're hungry all the time. No, this is but, real hunger. Like but you got to get you got to get uh, comfortable with that feeling. You know, you you have to learn to uh, to get comfortable with that. And and that was one of the things I. I just had to keep my mouth busy by chewing gum or, or drinking water. That helped out a ton. Totally. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible. But not if you guess along the way. So we're going to talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now, there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher body